everybody. We're here at the house used in the original Scream. We're gonna take you inside and we're gonna go on a tour so we can show you how the house was used in the movie. Yeah, let's go! Oh, need the camera. All right, we just came in through the front door and so we're in the foyer of the house. And you see this room a lot near the end of the film after most of the other kids have gone and after Stu and Billy have revealed themselves to Sydney. Surprise, Sydney. In fact, through this front door is where Gail comes with the gun and she ends up getting knocked back against this pillar and falls down on the porch next to Dewey. This layout follows uh, what they do in the movie. Another moment earlier on is when the party's clearing out. Tatum, come on! Right Nobody here but us chickens! Yeah. Bark, bark, bark! I've always liked that part. In the movie, these walls are dark red. They've repainted all the walls in this house to be yellow. But clearly, these stairs are the ones that Billy winds up falling down after he's fake stabbed, after he comes out of that room and is all like, Sid! I would love to recreate that fall, but I don't think the owner of the house would appreciate that. Whatever. We were told that production used this as a staging area, which means that the crew hung out here. They did basically what we're doing now, put all their stuff here, their equipment. This room is not used at all in the movie, even though it's a pretty cool room, but you do see a shot of it. When Billy's here on the ground, you can see a shot from this angle and you see a couch in the movie. The famous kitchen is through that doorway. They keep that layout in the house and they also keep that this is a closet. So actually, uh, let's see what's in that closet. Hold on, let's see what we got here. Ah! Oh, hi, that's just chance. <laughs> This is the closet that Sydney jumps out of with her umbrella that she stabs Billy with. But she missed the protective vest that he was wearing, so that scream is super real and sounds very painful. Ah! After she comes out of the closet, stabs him, Stu comes out from over there, which makes sense layout-wise with the house because the kitchen's back there, and Stu starts chasing Sydney. Stu and Sydney have their fight in here, and that fight ends up making its way to this room over here where they go through this doorway and over this couch. And this is our room where most of the party is happening. This is where everyone's hanging out and watching Halloween and where Jamie Kennedy is explaining all the rules of horror movies. I want to put this away now. <laughs> <laughs> this room is staged so perfectly. We've got all kinds of cassettes over here, which are there in the movie. We've got our TV set up, very similar to what's used in the movie, and we have our potted plant. Obviously not the same one, but you get the idea. <laughs> Telling me about how to survive a horror movie. No sex. <laughs> Big no no. And one of the most important rules of horror movies is you never sleep with your pants on. Oh, that's right. 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 Oh, that's there was a big cabinet here that has since been removed. Good choice on that, really opens up this space. And of course the walls have once again been repainted to this yellow. They were blue in the film. But the tiles on the backsplash, that's all the same. Also the same, this light fixture, which I think is kind of cool. And the blue would have gone better with the blue walls back when that was painted. This little baby island in the middle of the kitchen, that's the same. You can see this open shelving unit during some of the shots when, of course, Stu and Billy are tormenting Sydney. It's called, guess how I'm gonna die! Hey, fuck you! She's around right here, getting teased by Billy and Stu. The stove is the same. This is an interesting stove. It's not gas powered, it's just always hot. So we just have to be careful later when we're cooking our Jiffy Pop on there, not to burn ourselves. But uh, pretty much everything else is the same. I mean, I think these cabinets are the same with the glass front. This door, which we don't have access to, but I think it's just a pantry, it's where Stu brings Sydney's father out to show that they're framing him and he falls down 
right around here. Guess we won't be needing this anymore. Uh -huh. The kitchen scene is one of my favorite climaxes in horror movies. I think it's so terrifying the way that Billy and Stu are and the way that they're tormenting Sydney and the acting is so great and get all of Matthew Lillard's amazing line deliveries. It's a scream, baby. You gotta have a sequel. I'm feeling rosy air. In fact, this is the little area, of course. Uh, if you come over here, it'll be the angle where Stu ends up taking a seat. This is the phone that Sydney calls them on and Stu ends up getting hit with. And of course he says, Fucking hit me with the phone, dick! And uh, this is when he's just kind of laying here and fucking dying, man. So Matthew Lillard spent a lot of time right here, which I'm just now comprehending. And I think that's awesome that I'm sitting in the same spot. What was that noise? Ghostface? Should I let the machine get it? As far as the layout of the kitchen goes, they do stay accurate to real life with this. Cause you have the kitchen here and through this doorway is this room where Brandy on screen right now, Jamie Kennedy is hosting the Halloween screening. One thing that is a little confusing with the movie is when they're hanging out here and Stu comes in and says, no, I couldn't believe who's here. It's a chick from Top Story. So he comes in through this doorway and it almost seems as though Gal and Julie had entered through this door. But as we've said, this is kind of a back door. You can see it just uh, doesn't really go anywhere. I mean, I think in the movie, there is a that white picket fence that runs all around the property that's no longer here. But other than that, this is just a porch. And uh, at least I always assumed that Dewey and Gal came in through this door, but I don't think necessarily the movie's trying to say that they could have come in through that front door, walk through here, where Gala has some adoring fans telling her how much they love watching her show. And she thinks that's great. You're damn right. Another thing that in the movie makes total sense, you would never notice it, but in real life makes no sense, is this the location of this closet in terms of where it is in relation to the TV with Halloween on it. Because Billy is here, he's about to open the closet, it's right before Sydney pops out with the umbrella, and he kind of hears the TV on. It's Halloween and it's Lori in the closet. So he looks and it, he almost looks like he's watching the TV, which is not anywhere near that side of the house. I can't even see into that other room. TV is back here, so it doesn't make sense. You hear that, Ray? I think she wants a motive. One of the things we noticed while watching the movie, too, is that in the movie, this house has a lot of little stained glass windows above the door frames. You can see one here, you can see one over that one, pretty much over every door, but those are gone now. So I guess that feature is not as popular nowadays. Okay, this is the room upstairs that Billy and Sydney had sex in. We were a bit confounded trying to find this room. It looks completely different. The only reason we were able to figure out which one it is it's because in the movie, you can see the blue tiling in this bathroom back here and the fact that this wall is kind of a weird angle. So we went looking and realized, oh, this is the room we're staying in. So it's the big master bedroom upstairs. One really weird thing about this room is if you look behind you, James, you will see that there's this whole other little area in here, including stairs that go out to the hallway where this big chase scene starts at the end, right after Billy gets quote unquote stabbed. <laughs> but the funniest thing is that in the scene where it's just Sydney and Billy talking after they've had sex, every shot of her is really, really tight. She's like right here because they're framing out the fact that this is stairs. I think there's like a fake window here, but in real life, I just think it's so funny that Sydney could have just <laughs> run down these stairs, which is what Ghostface does. Ghostface pops out of this door down here. So instead of taking these stairs that exist in real life, and I think in the movie they're trying to make it seem like they don't exist, Sydney jumps over the bed <laughs> and goes all the way around this way, out into this hallway up here. In the movie, there is stained glass up here. You can see that now there is a very beautiful Ghostface Sure. <laughs> so we just came out of the master bedroom. Sydney is chased by Ghostface and she runs across this little, nice little balcony area over the foyer that we were in. And she runs into this room. She does come through this door and is running. And as Chelsea said, when she gets over here and is trying to go downstairs, that's when Ghostface comes down these stairs. 
So that does make sense. Ghostface was in this room just like we were because again, this is the master bedroom. We're back in that, they ran out this way. The only thing that doesn't make sense is Sydney could have come from this corner and come down these stairs just like this. Instead, she allowed Ghostface to do that and he stops her. So she can't go back down the stairs and out the front door. Instead, she comes back up these little stairs. I just love the layout of this house. It's so weird. It's so weird. And it works so well for a horror movie too. So uh, I don't think these back rooms are used at all. So she runs back through here. And when the film was made, this was not a wall. This actually opened up into, you can see through the window, there's another part of the house. And right now the owners of this house use that as a guest house so that people can stay there while they hold events. But we can show you what's on the other side of that wall because that's where Sydney runs during the chasing. So let's go check it out. Okay, so this is the opposite wall of where we just were. And you can see that this is the room that Sydney runs from there through, because you can really tell by the shape of this entryway. Right now, there's a lot of beds in here. Like I said, it's a guest house for events. This isn't for a commune or anything. Uh, it's just so people can sleep during weddings and stuff. But Sydney runs this way, I think she tries to open this window and it doesn't work. And so with Ghostface coming after her, I believe she then goes through this window. This is the window from which she falls into the driveway there, as you can see. And of course, in the driveway is a boat that she lands safely on. Because landing on a boat, pretty much a mattress. Did you land on a mattress boat? That's not even a thing. Up those stairs is the guest room that we were just in where Sydney's chase scene ends and she jumps out the window. And this is where Tatum walks through to get beer from the garage. Whoa! Hey, shitheads! So right now you're kind of in Ghostface POV when Tatum asks, oh, do you want to play Psycho Killer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to play Psycho Killer? And then you get hit in the face by this fridge. Ah! <laughs> that obviously we have our garage doors, very exciting. The doggy door is not there anymore. We were informed that it's gone. Fair, because you know that we would have tried putting ourselves in it and probably breaking the garage. <laughs> and right here is where the boat would be. So that's the window that Sydney falls out of onto the boat that's here. And honestly, being here in person, it makes sense that no one would see Tatum's body because look at where we are. <laughs> Some cows might see her, but it makes sense to me that no one realized she was there all night for this party. All right, hope you enjoyed this tour of the Scream House. I know I did. Yeah, thank you guys. So, what is that? I don't know. Go for it. <laughs> Wait, oh my God, oh my! It's Ghostface. Oh my God, it's Ghostface. Look at Jimmy Pop. Oh, oh hey man. Are you watching a scary movie tonight or what? Like, oh! <laughs> <laughs>